Hi guys, welcome back to uh, another episode of The Void Guys. Finally we're back. We've had a little bit of a uh, Christmas holidays. Christmas stuff, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then we were at a couple of events, mm -hmm. and now we're back. So, <laughs> And I've got all Clark Kent on you uh, in the meantime. Uh, anyway, so what are we going to do today, Matthias? We go deep. <laughs> we go deep, <laughs> okay. Um, I think what you mean by that is we're going to go have a look at debugging. Um, yes. And we're going to start using uh, Wireshark. Last, yeah? last time we promised to use Wireshark mm -hmm. and to try to do SIP debug and best practice SIP debug and let's see how we can do this. Okay. And I'm not sure if we can put everything in one video, but we just <laughs> start now. This is going to be like our introduction to SIP that was uh, over four videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, but maybe now everybody knows how it should work. Right, okay. Okay, so let's go to the console and see what we have for you. Um, this is our asterisk server as usual, and here we have three different soft phones. Um, now we try to debug something. The first approach we already discussed is just go to, to the asterisk CLI and uh, enable the debug. I will show how that works, asterisk minus R V V as usual. And then I say SIP set debug and then I can choose. I can say um, for a single peer like this for Matthias, James, blah, blah, blah. Or I can say in general on. Then I enable the SIP debug for every peer, for each peer I, I got. Um, this is um, something you can do mm -hmm. if you have 500 peers. Right, okay. Then good luck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> to, to see something. But on a small instance, you can just do it like this. Okay. Um, then you can see every SIP traffic. If you're doing some tests, um, then you normally have a few peers only, mm -hmm. and then you can enable the SIP debug as a whole. Okay. But now I will show you what happens if I dial a number here. So Matthias with 100 calls James 200. Um, then let's see what output we get. And then I answer the call. Then we talk a little bit. Then we close the call. And now I can scroll back. And then you can see there is a lot of information. So this is SIP and how SIP does the signaling. And you can debug it. But let's say you have hundreds of calls in the same time. Or the peer does many things at the same time. It's just not a good overview of what happens. That's a lot of information to go through. Yes. Yeah. You can do this on, um, on test systems. Mm -hmm. If you have only two peers, then enable it or enable it for just one peer. Then do one call, then exit the CLI. This is important because mm -hmm. otherwise it scrolls away okay. um, your output and then you scroll up and it scrolls down again automatically. So yeah. exit the console mm -hmm. and then go up and then you can read what's going on. Okay. Um, Good this is there. this is something you can do, um, but there is a much much better way to do this. Uh -huh. What's that? Um, you can write the output to a file or grab the output mm -hmm. to a file, okay, and then open it with a much better tool for viewing what's going on, okay, and that's Wireshark. Uh -huh. The problem is, um, Wireshark is a tool which you start on your notebook mm -hmm. or on your PC or a Mac yeah. or something like that. You start it there. And then you can capture your local network cards. But uh -huh. that's not helpful because your local network cards, this is not where the calls go through. Of course, yeah. So it goes, uh, the calls are happening on your server. Yeah. So the question is, how can I use Wireshark to see remotely on the server what's going on? Right. Um, there are many ways you can do this. The easiest way is you use TCP dump which mm -hmm. can write a file which, uh, where you can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then you copy the file after you did uh, the debug, you copy the file to mm -hmm. your local machine okay. and open it in Wireshark. Uh -huh. And then you can do the debug, not live, yep. um, but you can do a review and um, Wireshark has lots of great tools okay. to give you a great overview over what happens. We see that Mm -hmm. um, later, but now I show you how to create such a file okay. and um, what you can use for doing this. Scroll down, okay. exit, and the tool you need is um, TCP dump. TCP dump is a tool which writes the whole network traffic. Right. Mm -hmm. um, 
to a file, you can also um, filter it. You can say, I want only port blah, 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 yeah. only the zip port, only blah, blah, blah. But what I do in most cases is just dump everything. Mm -hmm. um, because you have great filters in Wireshark where you can filter out information you don't need. And sometimes if you debug zip and if you say, I uh, create a filter in TCP dump, mm -hmm. then you cannot see what's going on left and right. Maybe there is another problem than that's, SIP yeah, it could be the, and you filter it out. Yeah, the problem that's causing the pro uh, problem in SIP is somewhere else maybe. In the so, somewhere else, another protocol. Maybe um, you see that um, there is uh, maybe another request in the same time, so your audio is bad. I don't know. Right. So mm -hmm. um, you should not, or if it's possible, then don't, don't just focus on mm -hmm. the SIP traffic. Dump the whole traffic and then in Wireshark you can just filter what you're interested in. Good. And maybe you get some other information which you would normally not see because you concentrate on SIP. Uh -huh. Good so, talk there. Yes, um, I can show you what are the right uh, parameters. So first you need to know which interface you want to monitor. Um, we have um, ETH0 which we want to monitor. Uh -huh and um, we dump the whole traffic. To do so, you have to be root. Okay. So, TCP dump, TCP dump, and then you have to provide the interface. This is an I. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you yeah. got it right, round of applause. <laughs> yes. You have to watch other tutorials if yeah. you want to know why we're so excited. <laughs> and, um, then um, we continue with write the file minus mm -hmm. um, write, and then um, we just say which file test pcap. Um, the file name is not important; it could just be test without pcap, but it's a pcap trace, okay. so we call it like this. Then we start the trace. Here I have um, to allow the sniff of the interface for my virtual machine, so. My Mac asks for a password. Now it's sniffing and we can do the call the same as before. Blah, blah, blah. I answer the call. Ba, 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 ba. Maybe we say something and then we just hang up. Then control C, you stop um, the capturing the interface. And then you can see you have um, 78 packets received. Mm -hmm. and they are all written to the file. Okay. Um, now, one special tip is um, if you just start TCP dump like this, mm -hmm. then you get only the header of each packet. Okay. So this is okay if you want to debug zip and if you just want to read the, the header yep. of um, the packets, then that's okay. Um, the advantage is that your capture is not so big in size yep. um, because you just have the header. Mm -hmm. But... Wireshark is also uh, able to debug um, the RTP stream, so what we talk to each yeah. other, mm -hmm. and debug this and see how the chitter is. What's and in the payload. Yeah, 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 what's in the payload, true. Mm -hmm. And you don't get this if you do it like this TCP dump, um, because you get just the header. Right. So you have to say, please capture everything, mm -hmm. but then the file gets a lot bigger, mm -hmm. because you have a whole payload right, okay. in the file. But I do this in many cases. If somebody, someone says, I have um, problems with audio, mm -hmm. then for sure I need the audio. Yeah, of course. Right. And um, need to debug it. Mm -hmm. Now, this does only work for sure for unencrypted audio streams. Right. But for now, the most are unencrypted. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we will see that. I will introduce the, uh, the switch you have to define. This is minus S, zero. Maybe we can compare the file size that you can see this. We have test pcap in this size. Mm -hmm. And then we try it again. Minus s zero. Zero means the size of the capture is not zero, but we don't care. We mm -hmm. capture everything. Okay. Zero means everything. Right, okay. So we start that again. Give it a try. Answer the call, say blah, 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 and hang up. Um, there are less packets, but that's just um, 
the curve is shorter? Yeah, that, that, that's no, uh, yes, maybe it's shorter, uh -huh. it's longer, there are uh, more or less um, RDP packets, but also maybe more or less uh, SSH packets because we are connected with S S S mm -hmm. SSH over the same interface okay. like this. So that's not a problem. But we can see that the file is smaller now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's not what I wanted to show. So because there are less packets, so it's also smaller. But in reality, it should be a lot RDP with the payload in it, right. and for sure it gets bigger. So this is <laughs> not a good test, but okay, I think everybody understood. <laughs> so, this is how we can create the file, mm -hmm. and things I want to mention about TCP dump. Yep. If, just another tip, um, if you have to do a long-term TCP dump, mm -hmm. let's say you want to start it in the morning, and then you want to write a file over the whole day, and in the afternoon you want to debug it yeah. because you don't want to wait until the customer says now there is the problem and then you start it very mm -hmm. so you want to yeah. do a long-term monitoring then you get in trouble with file size because you capture everything from the interface yeah. and there is a cool command line switch in TCP dump where you can say make only files not bigger than 100 megabytes uh -huh. and if we have 100 megabytes, then start the next file, start the next file, and uh -huh. maybe start 10 files, and uh -huh. then overwrite the first one again. So you are sure uh -huh. uh, you have only 100 megabytes by 10 files, uh -huh. and not bigger than that, and you don't run in trouble that your disk uh, runs Run out, of space. Space, yeah. out of space because of that. Yes. Uh -huh. um, I think that's enough for now. Okay. Next time we copy the file and do the debug with it. So next time we get even deeper. Even deeper. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, good. Enough of that for now. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Next time around, we'll get into having a look at actually debugging with Wireshark. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, goodbye. Bye.